Welcome to the Thomson Refractor. That's the name of this massive telescope we have here. The telescope we regard as a jewel in the crown of the Equatorial Group, which is a group of telescopes here at, at Hurstman Zoo. The telescope has a 26 inch lens. It's not a single lens, it's a doublet. It's two lens, lenses stuck together. They refract the light all the way down the tube from one end to the other to where we've currently got a viewfinder. The telescope and all its moving parts weigh about 12 tonnes, which is really, really heavy. It's as much as two red London buses. Now, on the other side of the telescope, where we've currently got a counterbalance weight, is where the Thompson reflector used to hang. Yes, Sir Henry Thompson actually donated two telescopes and not one. It was difficult to use both telescopes, of course, at the same time while the telescope was at Greenwich. When they came here to Hurstman Zoo, they had more space and the telescopes now live in separate domes. The telescope was not used to look through, although it has got an eyepiece fitted at the moment. It was actually used photographically. Now we've got a mobile darkroom over there, and that's where the plates holders were kept. Example here, that's the black box the, holders, the plate holders were held in, and that's one of the plate holders, which would actually fit on the back of the telescope for the exposure. The photographic plates themselves were developed in the main building and they were compared. So what they would do is take photographs of the same part of the night sky, say six months apart, compare the two of them and measure the parallax or the slight difference between the two pictures to measure distances in space. Because the telescope was, was used photographically, to line it up it needed a sighting scope or a finder scope which is on the top there. Now that's a 12 and a half inch refractor that telescope was part of the Great Equatorial, which was one of the biggest telescopes at Greenwich in the 1860s. This one was the biggest, one of the biggest in the 1890s. You notice the telescopes are painted battleship grey. This is obviously strong Abrunty connection. And also when the telescopes were moved from Greenwich to here in the 1950s, they were all taken to pieces. Now this gave huge problems for the engineer that had to reassemble them because there were no formal plans. These telescopes were all bespoke, all one-offs, and he had a series of postcards, which they obtained from Greenwich, and he had to assemble them according to the postcards. A very difficult job. The telescope is extremely powerful. It's able to uh, take photographs down to magnitude 19, which is very, very low indeed. It's 100,000 times dimmer than the faintest stars that we can see with our eyes. It was also used to measure quasars, the 26 inch lens make this telescope joint 12th largest telescope of its type in the world. Now because of that huge lens at the top there, or huge doublet lens at the top, basically you need a very, very long tube in order for the tele telescope to offer effectively. Now the problem with that is the telescope uh, has a wide swing, particularly when you're looking at objects low in the night sky. The telescope moves quite around quite a bit when you're looking there or looking higher up. Therefore, it needs a rising floor, and this is one of the only ones of its kind in the world still working. The dome itself is a magnificent piece of architecture. The roof is hand-beaten Zambian copper. The, the walls are mahogany, possibly Cuban, very, very strong hardwood and extremely hard to get hold of these days. And the floor is solid teak. All of it is in fabulous condition. So what would it have been like to actually use the telescopes here in the 1950s? For a start, it would often have been really cold. The domes are deliberately designed, they're built like a fridge, um, and at one time apparently they even had electrically heated suits which they plugged into the walls um, and were left over from Bomber Command in the Second World War. Now somebody one evening apparently smelt a strong smell of burning, wandered all around the room trying to find out what was actually on fire, and then eventually he realised it was his own Guernsey sweater because the um, suit, the heated suit, was actually melting on his back. The site itself is full of danger. Basically, it's not flat. Understandably, you'd normally think that when six telescopes are in a group, that you'll be able to walk out from a, a, from a central building and walk straight paths. Not here, there are steps, there are corners, all sorts of different levels, and even a huge ornamental pond. Now, I can say without fear of contradiction that this is the only observatory in the world with a pond in it. 
So why did the observatory ultimately close? It's pretty obvious really when you're here these days. Um, it's almost on sea level. There's lots of cloud, there's lots of sea mists. Although the um, situation, the atmosphere here was an awful lot better than London, it still wasn't very good for, uh, for long-term nighttime viewing. So eventually they looked for sites elsewhere. They looked in Cape Town, they looked in South Africa, they looked at various parts of the world, and they finally settled on La Palma in the Canary Islands, Hawaii and Chile. In each case, the, mount the telescopes these days are mounted on top of mountains or dormant volcanoes, putting the telescopes above the cloud line and they can be used night after night after night. So finally, we've got the 12th largest telescope of its kind in the world here. This telescope was used for lunar mapping for the Apollo missions. Uh, the mapping was done here by Patrick Moore and a small team, which was sent to the Americans and formed the foundation of the maps. The telescope has a rising floor. It is a fabulous telescope to look through. I can't recommend more strongly that when you get the opportunity, when we're able to, that you come to Hurstman Zoo and see this telescope and the others in the equatorial group. <laughs>